I am here with what I'm going to call the Solution Accelerator crew here, or at least part of it here. <laughs> and uh, could each of you tell me a little bit about uh, what you do? Hi, David. I'm Mary Ann Blake, and I'm a program manager for the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. Okay. And I'm Baldwin Ng. I'm the product manager for the Microsoft Assessment and Planning Toolkit and Infrastructure Planning Design Guide Series. And I'm Melissa Stowe. I'm a program manager on the Infrastructure Planning and Design Series. All right. Well, part of uh, what I'm hoping to accomplish here and for our audience today is to do a little bit of demystifying for each of these tools on where they kind of fit into helping out our customers that are out there today. Let's start off with the IPD guides. And could you tell me a little bit about how those guides are going to help people plan for moving over to Windows 7 and Server 2008 R2? The infrastructure planning and design series um, is really a full suite. We have 19 guides out right now with more coming out you know, every month. Um, and they're designed to help our customers accelerate the deployment of our server technologies. So we have guides on file services. So you can go out and figure out you know, where to place your file servers, how many you're going to need, how to scale them appropriately, um, how to take advantage of new technologies like the branch cache that's coming out in um, R2 so that you can design your infrastructure right the very first time and you don't have to go back and redesign it um, later because you find out it's not meeting your needs. So we really just try and make sure they do it right the first time and we try and make it go fast. So all the guides are 50 pages or less and they have a quick decision flow to walk you through, you know, really just the information you need to make the decisions to design it right the first time. Okay. So maybe if somebody has a existing infrastructure of, let's say, Server 2003 or 2008, um, they pick up the guide and they say, well, um, you know, we're thinking about implementing branch cache or another particular feature. They can take that guide and maybe use it before they start anything else with a deployment and figure out, well, how do I want to implement a feature X, Y, Z? Exactly. I mean, with, okay. you know, you're weighing, um, should I go with branch cache or is DFS better to serve my needs? Um, there's trade-offs associated with both of those and, you know, there's places that you would use this but maybe not want to use that. And even if you're on 2003 now or 2008, we'll help you um, design it right and um, validate your current design, you know, if it is just a, um, moving from 2008 to R2, you know, the smaller mm -hmm. steps like that. Is there any major limitations, would you say, where, okay, our, our guides definitely don't help you with X, Y, Z? Um, we don't usually delve into the operational stuff. Um, we're about designing your architecture, your server placement, your fault tolerance, your scaling, um, those kind of decisions. So we're going to hand you off to the product group documentation at that point. Um, so we kind of complement each other in, in that way. We're the quick start guide to um, doing the planning. And then after that, um, we'll let the product group uh, documentation take over from that point. OK. All right. Well, next, we've got our plan in place. Now you know, we've got to figure out right, how, what do we have and, and how do we get there. And I'm going to guess that that's where the map tool comes in, right? That's right. That's okay. one of the superheroes of Solution Accelerator. <laughs> okay. Including IPDs, of course. Uh, map is uh, uh, definitely, a, I would say, it's an integral part of planning. Uh, we actually started out thinking that, uh, you know, assessment is pretty easy to do, but as it turns out, trying to scale a discovery engine across over 100,000 machines is actually no small feat. We've developed this for several years, and now what we've seen is people are using the map toolkit for many different tasks, but I'll just highlight a couple. One for Windows 7 migration. We're actually getting close to releasing uh, a beta now, and I think by the time the video comes out, it will be ready for you to consume. Uh, and this tool will then look at this massive number of desktops, analyze the hardware and device compatibility, or, or lack thereof, and then highlight the ones that can go to Windows 7 without any hardware upgrades. Highlight ones that we need some minor, let's say memory upgrades, could be really cheap these days with memory being so uh, low cost. And at the same time, maybe identify some PCs that simply are really old enough that the CPUs no longer uh, match with the Windows 7 uh, requirements. And we give you those flavors. We color them in a nice pie chart, a nice report, and also give you Excel spreadsheets to nail down specific PCs. Which PCs are we talking mm -hmm. about? If you're 70% ready for Windows 7, which 70%? Uh, 
Yep. Uh, so that's the Windows 7 side. And something we've newly added too is we heard feedback from customers saying, well, um, in some situation, let's say a developer may want uh, higher requirements for the hardware because they're running a lot of apps, right? And in that case, the, the MapToolkit 4.0 now has the ability to set customizable hardware requirements that are higher than Microsoft Minimal so that you can tailor to the really heavy duty users as opposed to uh, perhaps an office worker. So we allow that flexibility. Uh, so that's the desktop side. On the server side, we help similarly for Windows Server R2. You can look at machines, uh, server machines across different domains and forests. We can do the same scanning again. We can do it typically within a few hours. And then we pull back information remotely into that map uh, computer. And then this computer will crank out similarly the R2 readiness for hardware compatibility to uh, device compatibility. Um, but then we don't stop here because we know that these days, one of the buzzwords of IT is server virtualization. Mm -hmm. And server virtualization, the great way to cut costs. But the question is, how do you know which set of machines, server-wise in this case, are underutilized enough, it's worthwhile for us to combine them into a single physical host? And the next question after that is, how many phys a sing a new physical hosts can I consolidate all these VMs into? for the now optimized data center. Uh, the answer is that Map Toolkit does that for you. It remotely monitors the performance metrics of network I.O., disk I.O., CPU usage, uh, memory utilization, and then do some modeling and give you some what ifs. What if I have this very large uh, new physical machine? Can I put in 30 machines in there, or maybe 15? And then how many of them is required? And what's neat about this is once this is done, not only do you have a report that you can hand it off to the decision maker, we also provide another, yet another feature that Map can pass on to yet another tool, which is an R virtualization ROI tool, which can capture some of the data about your environment and analyze total cost of ownership and return on investment if you decide to go ahead and consolidate your servers uh, using the Hyper-V or Hyper-V R2 technologies in Minnesota 2008. So I think with the help of IPD, which helps you with in-depth planning for individual technologies of uh, Windows Server and different roles and Hyper-V as well, mm -hmm. as well as the Map Toolkit. Now you have a good solid pieces of data and essentially a blueprint for you to go ahead with the virtualization or server migration or Windows 7. The Map Tool sounds great as far as the functionality and capabilities, but I think a lot of one of the concerns that people have is, well, man, what is it going to take for me to roll this out in my environment? Right. Can you give a, a little bit of an idea of the technical nitty gritty for an IT guy and what he's going to have to go through to get the map tool implemented in his environment? Sure. Uh, map tool is actually, it's really great in the sense that it does not require other management software, does not require any agents to be installed. I mean, imagine you, you have an environment, maybe 20,000 desktops. Uh, there are other tool sets out there that require you to install an agent into the 20,000 machines. Just imagine going through that process, either manually, or going through some kind of a security analysis and all that, uh, and let alone the impact of the end users, is probably not something you want to do for an analysis that easy, that, that supposedly that short period of time. We now enable it uh, with the agentless model of MAP. So all you need to do is enable WMI calls to flow from the MAP machine through the network into the endpoints where all these different computers are. And, uh, and we have actually specific guidance on how to set up the WMI remote calls. And, and as long as you have the other thing, which is the domain credentials or local machine credentials of actually pinging those machines, you're good to go. It's really lightweight. It it's, uh, does not require any extra software. And the best part, too, is totally free to Microsoft customers or anybody interested in Windows 7 or Windows Server or 2, et cetera. I remember when I ran the map tool at a nonprofit that I was volunteering with, um, new network, wasn't familiar at all with it, installed the tool, ran it, and it gave me such a great picture of what was on that network and you know what was ready for upgrading and whatnot, and it was so easy to use. It, yeah. it really made me feel like the superhero when I walked in. I'm like, okay, now I'm ready to go. I understand the mm -hmm. environment. It was fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you'll need to have the, the machines all domain joined, I assume. Actually, interestingly, we give you different ways to do it. So if you have machines under, let's say, an AD environment, we can scan through the ADDS, the Active Directory Domain Services way of scanning those machines within different OUs, et etc. Uh, 